Can we also please welcome Sayyid uh, Muhammad Mehdi Al Husseini Al Mudrasi with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bari al-khilaiqi ajma'ina ba'ath al-anbiya'i wal-mursaneen. Thumma salatu wa salamu ala khayri khilqillah. Al-abdi al-mu'ayyad wal-rasul al-musaddad. حبيبي إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين من كلام لسيدنا ومولانا أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب يقول الناس نيام فإذا ماتوا انتبهوا It is a great honor my dear brothers and sisters to be amongst you tonight on a blessed night from the nights of the holy month of Muharram I join you once again I remember the last time I was blessed to come to this place was of Muharram 2005 and I had the honor to sit at the same table with my brother and colleague Samahat Sayyid al Mudarasi. And I am very glad to be able to join you once again. And I specifically remember Sayyidina, you were speaking about the evil of Stealing towels from hotels. I do remember that. <clears throat> I hope no one has stolen towels since then. Maybe Bibles? No, not, that's an oxymoron. Steal a Bible from a hotel. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. We as human beings. One of the things that happens to a lot of us, and it's quite natural, is to have dreams. Dreaming is part of human nature. I don't think there's a human being that doesn't dream. We all dream. Sometimes we remember our dreams, sometimes we forget our dreams. But there's a very important fact about dreaming. And I'm sure that all of you will notice this. When you're dreaming, you don't realize you're dreaming. You think it's real. Some people, they have happy dreams. They see themselves, they win the jackpot, they've won a million pounds or a million dollars. Others might see a sad dream. Someone's dying, either themselves or a family member. Other, others have a scary dream. They see themselves falling off a building or whatever. But what's important is that when you're dreaming, you don't realize you're dreaming. You think this is real. Not, a, not, for, not a for a second, second it, crosses it crosses your, your mind, mind that, this that this is, is fake. fake. This is a, this dream. Is a dream. You think, you it's, think real. it's real. That's, That's why, why if it's, it's a scary, scary dream, dream, you begin, you begin to, sweat, to sweat, you begin, you begin to perspire. Right? Why? why? Because, because your body, your body sells, sells what the, with the mind, mind buys what the, what the mind is selling it. The mind, the mind is saying, is saying this, is, this is, real. is real, your body, your body believes, believes it's real, it's real. So, you so, get, so you get you get scared, scared. you begin, you begin to, sweat. to sweat, you begin you to press You wake, you wake up, up, you're shaking, shaking. because, because you, think you think it's real. It's real. Or, or when you, when see, you yourself see yourself winning the jackpot, the jackpot you, wake you wake up happy. Up happy. Why? Because, Why? because you thought it was real. real. Not for a moment did you think that it was fake. When is it that you realize that this is a dream? It's not reality. The second, the second that, you, that wake you wake up, up. The, moment the moment that you, that wake, you wake up, up you, discover you discover that what, that what you've been watching, watching what you've been, been seeing, seeing, it's a movie. It's a dream. It's a dream. 
Sometimes, Sometimes it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's, it's better than better the movies than the that, movies came, that out came out in Hollywood. In Hollywood. It's fake. It's fake. Only, Only when you wake, you wake up. up. The hadith, the hadith says, says, Anas, Anas Niyam. Niyam. Everyone's, Everyone's asleep. asleep. You and you I are and sleeping, sleeping right now. Anas Niyam. Fa'idha matu. When is it that they wake up? The moment that they die. Right now that we're leaving, we're actually sleeping. This is nothing but a dream. This is nothing. It could either be a nightmare for some people. Those that, Those that are far, far from, from Allah, Allah, this is a this nightmare. Is a nightmare. Those, Those that are that close, close to Allah, Allah this, is this is a fantasy. fantasy. But the important thing is, this is all a dream. dream. When is it when that, is that we, wake we wake up? up? When is when it that, is that we realize this is all a dream? It's all a joke. It's all a game. game. The second that we die. The second that we see Israel. When he comes and knocks the door, that's when we realize that the game's over. We're leaving. We're departing. We have to go. Have you, have been, you to been to a place, place where you enjoy, enjoy it so much, much that the, the minute, minute that you have, that you to, have leave, to leave, it's such, it's such a, a sad, sad time for you? For you? That's, how, That's it how it is. The town that, that we have, have to leave, leave we realize that, that all of this was a dream. dream. All of this was, was a game. game. And nafs and niyam fa'idha matu The Quran says, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ بِطَائِكَ فبصرك اليوم حديد. When you die, your vision becomes 20-20. You get to think, you get to see things that you didn't realize before, you didn't see before. In this life, there's so many things that we don't realize. So many things that we don't comprehend. The Hadith says, صلاة الليل is light in our graves. Do we understand what that means? When we go, we go over there, there we realize what it means. We realize, realize the importance of Salat al the significance of Salat al Or Salat al So many of us, we neglect to pray Salat al We don't realize what it means. When we go over there, we see the value of Salat al We see how much reward it has. How much Salat al how much reward it has. The Hadith says, He who cries, or makes others cry, or pretends to cry, subhanAllah. Or pretends, or pretends to cry, to cry for the cause, cause of Imam, Imam Hussain, Hussain deserves, deserves forgiveness. forgiveness. Or in or another, another hadith, hadith shall enter, enter paradise. paradise. Do you realize, Do you realize the, significance the significance of these, of these tears? tears? Here, Here we, don't. we don't. That's why, That's some, why people, some people, they ridicule, ridicule us. us. <laughs> Look at them, Look at them crying, crying for a man who died 14, 14 centuries, centuries ago. Beating, beating their, their chest, chest for a person who died 14, 14 centuries ago. They think it's a joke. They don't realize it. They only they realize, realize that, 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 that life. life. And that, that life. So, so many righteous, righteous people, people have seen, seen dreams, dreams and have and been have told in their dreams, dreams that in that, that life, life there is there's one man that, that counts. counts. He's, the He's the commander. commander. He's the commander in chief. chief. And that man, that man is Sayyid al Shahada and Imam al Hussein. How well, How well is your is connection, your connection with, him? with him? Because when you go there, you're going to need him. him. When you go, when there, go there, you're going to want, want some, some sort of relationship, relationship with him. So let's, so let's think, think about this. Let's, let's, let's think about, about that next life. life. Let's, start let's start preparing, preparing ourselves for that next life. life. Enough, Enough about this life. life. Enough, Enough investments in this life. We spend all of our hours, all of our minutes, all of our days, our entire life working for this life. It's all about, it's all about enjoyment, enjoyment in this life. life. We neglect that life. life. We, neglect we neglect the real life. 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 The eternity. The eternity. Amir al Imam, Imam Ali alayhi al salam. Al was coming, coming back, back from the from Battle, Battle of Safin, where he, he fought, fought with Muawiyah. He, he was coming back to his capital, which is Kufa, the city of Kufa. The narration says that he stood behind the city, the city of, of Kufa. Kufa. What's, What's behind, behind the city of Kufa? Kufa? Today, Today, which city is behind the city of Kufa? Kufa? Najaf. Najaf. Waqaf fi zahra al-Kufa aw ala zahra al-Kufa wa ja'ala al-Khatibu al-Qubur. There was a cemetery. Until today, there's a cemetery in Najaf. In fact, it's the largest cemetery in the world. Millions 
million, million hundreds, hundreds of, of millions of people, of people are buried in the cemetery. cemetery. He, stands, he stands, his companions, his companions are, around are around him, and he and says the following, Ya Ahl al-Ghurba, Ya Ahl al-Turba, Ya Ahl al-Wahsh, Ya Ahl al-Wahda. All the people of loneliness, all the people of darkness, all the people of soil and sand, all the people of solitude. أنتم لنا فرط سابق ونحن لكم تبع لاحق. You have beaten us to your destinies, and we shall soon be following. And then the Imam gives them a little flash. He tells them, "You want to know what's happening here? What you're missing out in this life? You want the news flash? You want the 411? I'll give you the 411." You want to know about your homes? Your homes, your homes are no longer, longer vacant. vacant. People, People are, are living, living in, your in your homes. A reliable, a reliable source, source. I heard, I heard the story from a reliable, reliable source. source. It, it says, says that, that a man, man a gentleman, gentleman, an elderly, an elderly man, man, passed, passed away. away. His, children, His children, as soon as, as they, they saw him passing away, away they, took they took him to a nearby hospital to put him in a fridge, in a refrigerator, until they buried him. They came back home. After two hours, the eldest, the eldest son, son receives, receives a phone call from the hospital, from the hospital telling, telling him to, to rush back, back to the hospital. To the hospital. He, said, he said, what's happening? happening? He said, we he have, have some wonderful, wonderful news for you. For you. Your, Your father, father is alive. alive. He, didn't, he didn't, die. didn't die. He said, my, my father, father didn't, didn't die? die? He said, he yes, said, your, yes father your father just came back. He came back to life. He said, who told him to come back to life? What is he doing coming back to life? He said, are, so you, are sure you sure you're his son, son or you're, or the, you're neighbor? the neighbor? I'm telling, I'm telling your, your father, father is back, back to, life. to life. Come and Come collect, collect him. him. And he's, and he's a, little a little bit cold because he was in a fridge. Bring a jacket, jacket with you. With you. I'm, just I'm just kidding. He didn't say that. Say that. He said, I, I, can't. I can't. Your father's, your father's alive. alive. He said, I, I can't, can't, can't see him anymore. Why? Because just an hour ago, we divided everything. The house, the house, the business, business the, cars, the cars, even, even his bedroom. bedroom. Even his, his bedroom is gone. He's going to come back, back for, what? for what? To see to that see everything is gone? gone? Let him Let stay. stay. Keep, Keep him with you, with you for a while. while. This, this is reality. reality. As for, As for the, the, the homes, homes, they're no longer, longer vacant. vacant. You want to know about your spouses? They already got married. Don't, Don't think, think that your, that your poor, poor widow, widow is, waiting is waiting for you. For You're not going to come back, back anymore. anymore. The, the husband's husband got married. married. Your wife got married. They're all, they're all getting married. married. You think you they're going to be, be waiting? waiting? Only, Only a, a fool thinks that his spouse is going to stay, stay for the rest of her life, life the, for the rest of his life, life and marry married. I have a friend, have a friend from Los Angeles. I saw him once. His wife passed away. We went to the funeral. We went to the burial. Every, Every time, time I saw him, he was, was crying. crying. Each, Each time, time I saw him, he was crying. crying. He would tell him to say, please, please pray, pray for me. Please, please pray, pray that Allah, Allah gives me patience. patience. And then one day I saw him, he was smiling. smiling. I told, I told him, him what happened. happened. Mulana, Mulana, I got I married. married. <laughs> well, congratulations. congratulations. No, no one, one stays, stays unmarried. unmarried. No matter how much you cry at the end of the day, you're going to forget. You're deceased one, you're going to forget. The person, the person who died, died going to go again. Go again. Wa amma faqad bakihat wa amma al-awwal faqad qussimat. Hada khabar You wanted the news flash? This is the news flash. You wanted to know what's happening? This is what's happening. Hada khabar ma'andana fama khabar ma'andakum. Now Amir al-Mu'mineen wants the news flash from them. Tell us what happened to you. Tell us about your journey. This long, long journey. journey, their journey, journey of, of death, death, after, after death, death, going, going in our graves. graves. What, what happens, happens in our graves? graves? When one cut a kill, they come. come. The first, first night in our grave. grave. Tell, tell us, tell us about, about that journey. journey. And then and he then looks at his companions. companions. He, says, he says, obviously they cannot, they cannot speak. speak. However, However, they cannot speak. But if they could speak, أما لو أذن لهم بالكلام لا أخبروكم. If they could speak, they would tell you one statement, just one statement, one sentence. 
this whole journey, they'll summarize it in one statement. لا أخبركم أن خير زاد التقوى. That the best thing to bring with you is تقوى. Make piety. Make piety. Nothing else matters. Not your homes, not your cars, not your children. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing else matters. Just bring piety. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to prepare us for that life. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to prepare us for that journey. Your tears, tears for Imam Hussein, brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters it prepares, prepares you. It helps, it helps you. This, this tear that, that comes down, down from your eyes, eyes. Don't, don't take, take it lightly. Light. Each, Each tear for that, that Imam, for that, for that sacrifice, sacrifice, it counts. It counts, it counts, it counts as, as mountains, mountains on your bare bones. There's a there's saying in Arabic, Arabic that, that says, says the habar al ma matan al When there's water, you have, you to, have perform to perform wudu. You cannot perform tayammum. So my husband said is here. I've taken more than, more than him, him from this time. time. You'd much rather be listening to his, his words of wisdom. Wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi. Thank you, Thank you for that interesting and thought-provoking lecture. lecture. Our second Our speaker, speaker tonight, tonight is Sayyid Muhammad Mahdi al Husseini al-Mudarisi. Sayyid was born in Kuwait in 1977. He comes from a prominent from family, family which includes scholars such as Ayatollah Muhammad Taqi al-Mudarisi. Sayyid's lineage goes back to the Holy Prophet through his grandson Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Sayyid has graduated from the houses of Damascus, Syria and Qom, Iran. He has also studied secular subjects such as sociology, politics and philosophy in the US and Australia. He has written four books. The first, called About the Signs of Allah and His Great Greatness, was published when he was only 15 years old. His first English title, Say He is Allah, is being prepared for publishing currently. He is also working as a supervisor of a committee set up with the task of writing educational material to be distributed to the American and British forces stationed in Iraq in order to inform them about Islam and invite them to better understand its principles and thought. His Muharram says that Madarasi is of course reciting in the Hujjah DLC. Today he gave his fifth in his series on the path of affection. His theme for tonight is moral complacency. Moral complacency is when we see something happen that we know is wrong, whether it be with friends or at a community, society or global level, and we do nothing about it. This is especially relevant in our lives today. Please welcome Sayyid al-Mudarasi with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وحبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين First of all I say to you brothers and sisters elders uh, as well as, as, well of, as course, of course, my very dear, dear brother, brother, my colleague, my, colleague, my second, second cousin, cousin Samah Masih, Hussain al-Qazwini, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So if you're wondering, yes, yes that, is that is where he gets, gets the good looks from, from. it's from my side of the family. family. And, and not, not only that, that but on a more, more serious, serious note, the Sayyid, as, as you probably, you probably know, know, is a resident of the holy city of Karbala, he resides in that city. And to reside in such a holy place, uh, obviously, uh, obviously has, has its, its uh, spiritual, spiritual advantages, advantages. Uh, but, uh, but perhaps, perhaps more relevant, relevant to us, us there is a tradition, tradition that states that, states that if one, one looks into the face of a person who has just returned from, from the pilgrimage, pilgrimage to the Holy City of Karbala for a period, a period of six, six months, months after their return, return when, when one, one looks into their face, face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them, in other words the observer, all of, all of their, their sins, sins now. This, this is a tradition that's not talking about the great race of Imam Hussein or the great race of his companions or even the great race of one who visits Imam Hussein's shrine but the great race of one who looks into the face of such a learned, wonderful person such as Samahat al-Sayyid. So I would have preferred that the Sayyid had 
uh, continued with his wonderful lectures so that we would benefit both from his knowledge as well as looking at his luminous face. May Allah bless him, inshallah. He really is a wonderful person. And, and uh, um, I myself uh, have a lot, lot to learn, to learn from, from him. Um, um, moral complacency. complacency. John, John Stuart, Stuart Mill, Mill is one of the, the foremost, foremost uh, social scientists, scientists philosophers, philosophers, and, and perhaps, perhaps the most renowned liberal thinker, thinker uh, in the in world. The world. Uh, he, he lived in the 19th, 19th century, century and... and the most, the most important, important work, work that was that produced, produced by, by this person, person is his, his book, book titled On Liberty. Liberty. A, lot a lot of you, lot of you are, familiar are familiar with that, with that book because, because it, it formed the basis and the, and the foundation, foundation for many of the constitutions of the Western, of the Western world. world. A lot of a lot the lot constitutions are actually based, based on the ideas, ideas postulated, postulated uh, and, expounded and expounded by, by John Stuart Mill, uh, especially in this book of his. And, and perhaps, perhaps one, of one of the most famous, famous ideas, ideas that he proposes in that book, one of the most uh, famous, famous uh, concepts, is, is the concept, concept of, of no harm. harm. Basically, Basically, the concept, the concept states, states that, that you can do whatever, whatever you, you wish. wish. You can engage, engage in any activity that your heart, your heart desires. desires. You, you can, can say, say or, or do what, what you want so long that you, you do, do not harm other, other people. people. In other, in other words, words your, your freedom, freedom ends where, where mine begins. begins. But, but more, more in the, the affirmative, affirmative sense of the term. term. So, so you can do, do what you want. want. As, long as long as you know, know that you're not hurting, hurting anyone, anyone. As, long as long as you know that nobody, nobody is suffering as a result, as a result either, either directly, directly or indirectly of your actions, actions then, then it's, it's okay. okay. Of course, there are, there are many flaws that we find in this concept. The first is that uh, this, this allows, allows people, people to engage, to engage in, 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 any in any immoral, in, in any illicit, illicit activity. activity. And, and it basically, basically gives, gives them an open, open ticket, ticket to do whatever, do whatever they, they want. want. Once, Once again, again as, as long as, as they, they don't harm, harm anyone. anyone. As, as long as, as if there are activities taking place between, between, one, between, between two, two or more people, people those, those activities, activities are consensual. That both, both parties, parties involved consent to what's taking place. Then it, it becomes, becomes okay. okay. First, First of all, all this, this paves, paves the way for moral, moral relativism. relativism. And the, the idea, idea of moral relativism, relativism is that there is, there is no, no absolute moral standard. standard. Uh, uh, that, that, that morality is subject to interpretation. To interpretation. That, that morality is subject to people casting their votes, votes uh, in, in the, the ballot, ballot box. box. That, that people can make, make their, their morality as they, as they go, go along. along. They can, they can choose, choose what's, what's right, right and what's, what's wrong. wrong. That, that there, there is, is no uh, absolute, absolute moral, moral standard. Sorry to disturb you, but there's, there's, there's two, two cars in the rugby car park, park which need to be moved immediately because they uh, want, want to close it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Two cars are there. Uh, when, 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 when there, there is, is no absolute moral standard, standard then, once then once again, again morality, morality is subject to interpretation. Morality is subject to what, what, whatever people, people wish it to be. be. And, and what, what that, that means is that, that today's sin, sin is tomorrow's, tomorrow's deed. deed. That, that yesterday's, yesterday's crime is something that deserves an award, an award in this day and age. And there, and there are, are so many examples of that. For example, Adolf Hitler... Uh, disliked, disliked three, three groups, groups of people, people. Uh, Jews, Jews uh, the disabled, disabled and, and homosexuals. homosexuals. He, he saw, saw disabled, disabled as, as a burden, burden on society. society. And, and he, he had, had the, the idea, idea that, that since, since these people represent uh, nothing, nothing but a burden, burden to society, society they're, they're not, not functioning, functioning members, members of society, of society. Therefore, therefore, they, they need, need to be eliminated. eliminated. Now, now, in this, in this day, day and age, it's interesting to see the parallels of how, how this, this idea exists, exists to this very day in the uh, area of abortion. Abortion, abortion takes, takes place, place in many, many cases 
where the parents are told that the child which is to be conceived, which is, which is going to be born, this child has some sort of a disability. And many people feel that that is grounds for them to forcefully uh, terminate the pregnancy and to kill the child. And, and, if, and if you, you take, take this idea, idea you'll notice, notice that it's exactly, exactly the, same, the same, except, except Hitler, Hitler went a step ahead, a step further, and he, and he said, well, well, since we missed this disabled, disabled child while he was uh, in, the uh, in the womb of his mother, mother and we, we didn't have a chance, chance to kill him, to kill him there, there, let's, let's kill, him kill him now that he's 20, 20 or 30, 30 years, years old. But it's exactly the same. Right? So that's one of the problems. Another example is homosexuals. And homosexuality was absolutely a It was loathed. At, at that, that time, time, not only in Germany, Germany but, but all over the world. world. Even, Even in the United, United States, States, homosexuality was seen as an immoral, an immoral act. act. Forget, forget sinful. sinful. Uh, forget, forget looking at it from a religious perspective. perspective. Morality, morality is different. Morality, morality is different from, from religious, religious laws. laws. Religious, religious laws, laws, we'll talk more about that perhaps later on. But religious laws are the laws that only a specific group of people adhere to because they subscribe to that religion. Whereas morality, what we're proposing is that morality is an absolute standard. It is something that everyone agrees on. Everyone agrees that stealing is wrong. Everyone agrees that, for example, hurting a little orphan child is wrong. There's no way you can condition that. You know, as hard as you try, you can pour all the conditioner, uh, from, 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 from that, that bottle, you can squeeze, squeeze it all you want, but you'll never be able to justify hurting a little orphan, orphan child. And, and, and that's, that's a part, a part of the absolute moral standard. standard. As, a As a matter of fact, fact we, we have a tradition, tradition that states, states the intellect, which represents the practical face of morality, it represents the faculty with which all of human beings are endowed, which allows us to make a distinction between right and wrong, between good and evil. This intellect is the, the inner version of religion. Religion is revelation. Religion is verses in a divine scripture. Right? So it's an external element that comes in order to reinforce the intellect that you have within you to reinforce the sense of morality that we have. So the tradition states that the intellect is religion within. And religion is the intellect without. In other words, they both reinforce one another. They both support one another. And they both complement one another. And they're both exactly the same as one another. Except to two different forms. So homosexuality was aborted. And yet, and yet, what you, you have, have today, today is, you know, you know most, most people living, living in the Western, Western Hemisphere, hemisphere uh, agreeing that, that homosexuality is no longer seen as an immoral act. act. It is okay, okay to engage in homosexual, homosexual activities, activities nowadays. nowadays. And they're, they're going, going a step, step further in, in trying, trying to legalize this marriage. This marriage. And it's, it's interesting, interesting, I remember a few years back, back there was a um, uh, very heated debate in the U.S. about allowing homosexual, homosexual partners, partners to, um, to to obtain, obtain legal status in terms of, 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 of their, their marriage, marriage quote-unquote. Quote unquote. And, I and I remember one of the brothers, brothers uh, you know, I, I, was I was talking, talking to, and he's, 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 you know, he's, he's, a, a, he's a Muslim, he was, he was telling, telling me, well, well isn't, isn't there, there a different way of looking at this? this? Maybe, Maybe we should allow them to do that, because we should deprive them of their human rights. I said, what are you talking about? What sort of human right are we talking about here? To get, get marriage, marriage, to get, get married, married to a, to a, a same-sex same partner and make, make that another form of the sacred establishment known as, as marriage, marriage? That, that desecrates, desecrates the very idea of marriage. marriage. It, absolutely it absolutely destroys the, the family structure. structure. So, let's so let's not talk, talk about human rights, rights here because what, what you see happening is morality becoming relative, relative rather than absolute. absolute. Morality, morality being based on what the majority think. What, 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 the, what, what the majority, majority vote, vote for in, in, in a democratic system. system. Whereas, Whereas that, that can't be right. right. Morality, Morality has, has to be absolute. absolute. It, has it has to be, uh, uh, it, has it has to have, have a static, static nature. nature. It, it can't, can't change. change. Otherwise, Otherwise, what was seen, seen as sinful 50, 50 years, years ago is today very, very much acceptable. acceptable. 
and consequently, consequently also, what is seen as sinful today will be acceptable in 50 years' time. Because, because according, according to the no harm, harm concept, concept, John Stuart, Stuart Mill's idea, idea if, if consensual relationships, relationships are okay so long that they don't hurt anyone, anyone and that they're consensual, like we said, what about, what about incest? incest? In fact, I remember, I remember a few years ago, uh, there was uh, a father who had engaged in intercourse with his, with his daughter. And his daughter was actually an adult. Technically speaking, she was, she was 18 years or, or perhaps older, I don't remember. He was, he was taken, taken to court, court and I think they even had some kids, it was messed, it was ugly. ugly. And, and he was, was taken to court, court and uh, he, was he was interviewed, interviewed on TV, on TV and, and, and he said, said something that makes a lot of sense if, if you take the ideas of John Stuart Mill and other liberal uh, philosophers and you, and you apply them literally. literally. He, he said, said we, we both agreed to enter in this relationship. relationship. What's, What's wrong, wrong with it? it? And suddenly people start wondering, well, that's true. If, 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 consent, if, if giving consent makes an immoral act moral, therefore this should be okay. Euthanasia is another example. In most countries around the world, with the exception of two or three, if I'm not mistaken, euthanasia is a crime. Even though the agreement between the two parties is consensual, isn't it? A patient who is a terminal patient, who is going through a lot of pain, and there's, and there's no, no hope of recovery whatsoever. whatsoever. Say, they're, say, they're, say they're 90, 90 years old and he's got, got you know, uh, uh, brain, brain cancer. cancer. There's, there's no, no way he can recover. recover. And, and the pain, pain is absolutely excruciating. excruciating. We, all we all agree. agree. As, As a matter of fact, fact uh, they, they say, say that the, the worst type of pain is, is, is cancer pain. Because, because it works within the cellular, at the cellular level. And it's very, very bad. It's excruciating, right? So this patient signs an agreement. And, and hands over his, his rights to his, his doctor, doctor, to his, his very, very trusted, trusted GP, and, and asks the GP, the GP to allow him to die in a merciful, merciful fashion. fashion. Is, is, is that, that okay? okay? Since, Since it's, it's consensual? consensual? It's, it's not, not okay. okay. So, so now, now people, people are starting, starting to see some major flaws in the idea of, of no harm. harm. Which is, Which is why Islam, Islam goes a step, step further. Islam, Islam says, says, yes, you can't hurt, you can't hurt other people. people. You cannot you bring, bring, bring harm, harm to other members of society. Of society. Yes, yes, you can't, can't do that. that. And, and the reason you can't, can't do that is because these people are individual, independent uh, entities. And at and the end of the day, the, the decision as to how they should conduct their lives goes back not, not to you, because you don't own them, them right? right? It goes, goes back, back to them. To them. Islam, Islam says the decision as to how you should conduct your life doesn't go back to you, but it goes back to your Creator. Your, your body was loaned to you. you. Your time, your resources, your energy, everything you have was loaned to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, in return, you, uh, you, know, you can experience all types of legitimate pleasure. You can, you can have, have your, your fun, fun. You, can, you can consume uh, food and, and, and drinks and, and, and enjoy your life. life. There's, There's no doubt about, about that within its legitimate channels. channels. But, but in return, return there, there are responsibilities. responsibilities. And one, one of those responsibilities, responsibilities is that you cannot bring harm to yourself. Which is, which is, which is by the way, why, why uh, incidentally, uh, suicide, suicide is also a crime. crime. Even, Even though, though there are no two, two partners, partners, there's no, no consent, consent required, required, it's you doing, doing what, what you wish, wish right? right? Without, Without hurting, hurting other people. people. But can, can you commit a, can, can you commit this crime? Can you, can you, can you jump, jump off the cliff or jump off the top of the building and, and kill yourself? yourself? No, no, you can't, can't do that. that. It's, it's not, not up to you. According, according to modern laws and constitutions. So, when it comes to morality, we have to refer back to an absolute moral standard. This moral standard is built into the human psyche. It exists within each and every one of us. We all have a basic understanding of what's right and what's wrong. Yes, sometimes what can happen is, uh, due to sin, due to prolonged periods of, of ignorance, what can happen is that uh, morality can be erased. This, 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 this built-in moral conscience that we have within us gets erased, which is why one of the main roles played by prophets and messengers and apostles is for them to unearth 
this is great, great treasure, treasure. This, 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 this uh, immensely powerful and important, important tool that, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed us with. The tradition states. This is the role of the prophets to unearth the, uh, the buried treasures of the intellect. And to remind them, the prophets came to remind us of the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the biggest and the worst consequences and the worst side effects of moral complacency within our small social circles, within a group of friends, within a community, and the fact that people overlook or, or let's, let's just say tolerate, tolerate certain, certain sins, one, one of the, the biggest side effects and, and by far, far the most dangerous is what, what most of us are unaware of and that is the fact that the sinful deeds or a sinful nature is very much something that people can pick up from one another. It's, it's like a disease. disease. It, it spreads, spreads really easily. easily. It's, it's airborne, airborne even. even. Which is why we have traditions uh, instructing us against ever speaking about sins. And I've seen, unfortunately, a lot of people are unaware of this. What happens is, uh, in order to, uh, to refrain from, from, from sinful acts, a friend might have the best of intentions, and he would tell his friend that, you know, next time I engage in, this, in the same sinful act, I'm going to come to you and tell you about it. That's why they have support groups, that's why they have... Uh, you, you know, know there are AA meetings, meetings and, and one of the ideas when you go to those AA meetings uh, is for you to sit down and talk about your problems, talk about, about your challenges and just, uh, you know, steam them, 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 them all off and, 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 and talk, talk about, about some of the things that you've been going through in the process of, uh, you know, uh, of, of stopping this bad habit, for instance. And that's wrong. Traditions tell us never speak of any sin that you commit, ever. Because what, what this does, does is that it gets, gets the word around, and people are start are, are going to start thinking that well, every, it, it seems that everybody's doing this. If he's doing it, then maybe it's okay for me to do it. He's a person who goes to mosque every day. He's a person who recites, you know, mufti every once in a while. He's a person who, um, who, who who's religious generally speaking. So it's, if it's okay for him to do it then subconsciously other people are, are going to start thinking that maybe it's okay for me to do it as well. They won't actually say it, but subconsciously that will act as an extra element to justify that same sinful act when it's committed by them. So it's absolutely dangerous, which is why traditions tell us uh, that, that we should never speak about sinful acts, we should never uh, help them service, we should never um, mingle with people who, who commit acts of sin openly. That by itself is a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous state of mind. If you knew that someone had a communicable disease, would you sit next to them? Would you socialize with them? Or is it not the case that when a father has a son and the son has a communicable disease, even as a father of this child, when he goes to the hospital to visit his son, he's got this thick glass uh, separating him and his son because the, the, the disease can be communicated. So even as a father, he takes precautions and he stays away from his son. Why is it that when, as friends and as family members, you know, a lot of people might say, well, you know, my cousin is, is kind of sinful, he's not that... Religious, he's not on a straight path, he, he goes to clubs, he does this, he does that. But at the end of the day, he's my cousin. I can't really sever relations, relations with a family member. Yes, you can. That's one of the messages that I may tell us. You can sever and you must sever relations with him. If you feel that you're not being a positive influence, if you feel that you're not doing, uh, you're, you're not able to sort of get him to realize the errors of his ways and to bring him back on the straight path. If you're not doing that, if you can't do that, and you give up, then you must sever all relations with him. In fact, on one occasion I remember a person, I remember seeing a hadith where a person came to Imam Sadiq alayhi wa salatu wa salam. The Imam told him that, uh, why do you 
visit so and so. He mentioned somebody's name. And he told the Imam, that's my uncle, Ya Ibn Rasulullah. The Imam said to him, but he has devious beliefs. And notice that how in this tradition, the Imam isn't referring to any actual sinful acts or a sinful lifestyle or an illicit sort of mindset. The Imam is talking about his beliefs, which is, which is uh, you know, a step further even. He has devious beliefs. He said to the Imam, but I never even talked to him about those topics. I just visited him socially because he's my uncle. The Imam said to him, you know what? You either visit us or you visit him. You want to go and hang out with your uncle, with your deviant uncle? Fine. Be my guest. Knock yourself out. But if you want to be with us, then you don't hang around your uncle. And the other problem, the other side effect, and I'll conclude, the other side effect of uh, you know, having this illicit lifestyle, which is dominant in this day and age, and it's, and it's very, very, very difficult, difficult to refrain from it. It's very difficult to stay away from it. Which is why Imam al Allah says in one narration, Yati ala nasi zamanun. There will come a day, al afiyatu fihi asharatu aqsam. Safety, and to be on the safe side, will be divided into ten portions. Tis'atun minha fi'atizal nas. Nine of those ten. Uh, Elements that help you stay on the safe side are about you isolating yourself from the rest of society. I know I'm making a bold statement here. And I'm not saying that you should avoid all forms of social contact with the outside world, that you, yeah, that you should become a, a, you know, a goth and, and live in a cave. I'm not saying that. But you have to assess your own situation. You have to analyze the given circumstances and decide for yourself. If you find yourself in a situation where either you mingle with people and are affected by their sense of morality, their twisted sense of morality, or you stay at home and be safe with you and your family, then it's, I think the choice is very clear here. The Imam says nine portions of safety are in you isolating yourself from the rest of society, and the tenth portion is for you to be silenced. To be, be silent, silent, not to talk. talk. Don't, Don't speak. Don't, Don't talk, talk too much. much. Don't, Don't engage. That's, that's the idea. idea. And of, of course, the, the other problem is that according to one of our traditions, one sin leads to the other. And I don't want to talk about this. But one sin leads to another. It's like a, a chain. Right? With rings. Each, each one of those rings represents a sin. You pull one, you're, you know... Inevitably, you're, you're also pulling the next, and the third, and the fourth. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. And the more you pull, the more you sink. And the more you sink, the more difficult it becomes to pull yourself out. It's like quicksand. The more you, you're there, you're trying to engage, the more you sink in. Though, of course, that doesn't mean that if you're at the very last stage of committing a sinful act, you can't stop and you can't say no. Yes, you can. And as we talked about last night, for those of you who were there, Al-Hurrab and Yazid al is a prime example of that. On how you can never make up the excuse of going too far into sin and not being able to come back out. Or that it was your circumstances that led you into, into the sin or whatever. You can't do that. But once again, one of the problems, like you said, is the fact that each sin leads to another. It's like a guy who uh, went to, to propose uh, and what he did was he obviously went to his um, potentially his in-law's house. He met the girl's father. He was sitting down chewing gum. So the, the girl's father sort of felt a bit offended and insulted. He said to him, I see you're chewing gum. He said, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nicotine gum. I'm chewing it because I'm trying to uh, quit smoking. He said, oh, so you smoke too? He said, yeah, well, I mean, you know, after the whole drug problem, I... Uh, I, 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 tried I tried to quit, quit that, that, so I'm, now I'm on smoking. He said, you did drugs? He said, well, I mean, when you're in prison, it happens, you know. He said, you were in jail? He said, well, I, I killed the guy, and... He said, you killed the guy? He said, yeah. 
He said, what did he do? He said, well, I proposed to his daughter. He wouldn't give her. And the problem is, one thing leads to the other. And before you know it, you're chewing nicotine gum. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to empower us, to give us the ability to refrain from all acts of sin and to try and remain steadfast on the straight path, on the path of Ahlul Bayt, inshallah, to please our 12th Imam. Let's not pour salt on his wounds. Let's not add insult to the injury. The Imam himself is going through so much. The fact that he can see his followers, his lovers being massacred, his followers being killed, his loyal Shia being displaced in places like Iraq, places like Afghanistan, elsewhere. The hardships that the Shia of Ahl bayt have to go through is enough for the Imam to bear. Let's not add insult to that injury. Let's not be sinful followers. Let's try and stay, uh, live, lead, a, lead a lifestyle that is in accordance to his teachings. Inshallah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin. Thank you for that enlightening lecture. We will now, inshallah, move on to the question and answer session so that everyone can gain maximum benefit from this session. Please keep your questions brief and relevant to the topics just discussed. Please also clarify which speaker you're addressing the question to. We will, inshallah, have alternating questions between the ladies and the gents. Is there a question from the ladies' side? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, this is a question for Sayyid Mudarasi. Um, you suggested to cut off ties with those with deviant beliefs, those who sin. Yet Islam has placed great emphasis and importance on Salah. Yes. What do you think about this? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Once again, as I explained, there needs to be a balance. Yes, Salatul Arham is important. Salatul Arham is a means of, uh, of the longevity of life. It extends our, our, our lives, as uh, mentioned in our traditions and hadith. It's a, a wonderful way to strengthen social bonds. It is a way to bring comfort to our loved ones and our family members. It is a means of providing financial support for the needy members of our, our families because some scholars say that Salat al arham is first and foremost prescribed so that people would support those in their family who are in need. And, and that is the best form of Salat al arham Yes, it's good to say Salaamu Alaikum every once in a while. It's good to give them a call on the Eid and all that. But what's even more important that is that if you have the means to do so, you should provide financial support for them. All those things are important. But remember, we're talking about uh, the, the unfortunate scenario of having a family member who is, who is not on the straight path, a family member who is leading a sinful lifestyle. And like I said, the biggest danger is us being affected by that lifestyle. Is us not only being unable to pull them back on the straight path, but being dragged along with them. And I think the example of the communicable disease uh, pretty much explains it all. If, if there is, uh, if, if they do have deviant ideas and beliefs or, or a sinful lifestyle, then either I try to cure them, if I can't, I stay right away from them. Um, and we have very, like I said, very uh, uh, clear traditions that instructed, uh, instructs us to do, to do, to do that. Hassan. Is there a question from the gents? I think there's a floating mic over there if um, anyone wants to ask a question. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my question was like, uh, how do you first refrain from certain uh, like sins? Any like protection to not commit sins? 
And you say like one sin goes to another sin and the third and fourth. How does it apply like in a more, in a, another kind of example if you can please? Thank you. The um, okay. First of all, um, one of the things that um, that we need to do is avoid areas of perplexity. Uh, what what needs to happen is we take a good look at our lives and the bad habits that we may have. Once the habits are identified, the first stage in eliminating that bad habits. Let's call it bad habits now. The first stage in eliminating the habit is to acknowledge the existence of the habit, right? Because it would be very unfortunate if the person was in denial. If they were engaged in a sinful act, and, and this is uh, quite a common occurrence, if they were engaged in a sinful act, and they were ignorant about the fact that this was a sinful act, or ignorant about the grave consequences of engaging in a sinful act, then they're in denial. And if they're in denial, what needs to happen is that, I mean, that's, that's where people have interventions. That's where people are, you know, encouraged to see a professional, encouraged to see um, a scholar, or someone who has the expertise to... Uh, make them well aware of the fact that they're engaged in a sinful act. So that's the first thing, to acknowledge the fact that uh, it's a bad habit, that it's an act of sin, and that it needs to uh, come to an end immediately. That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, once the bad habit is acknowledged and recognized, then it's quite easy to find out how this bad habit came about, how it was formulated. And once that happens, it's, it's quite easy also to find out under which circumstances do I feel inclined or do I feel the urge to engage in this sinful act. For example, if someone um, commits the sin of backbiting all the time, well, in that case, they know that for them to remain isolated and not to be with a certain group of friends, for example, who have, uh, have uh, you know, a certain way that encourages this sin, they know what the way out happens to be. All you got to do is stay away from that group of friends, stay away from that, from that uh, specific circle of friends. Or if, if, it's, if it's the kind of sinful act that takes place um, while a person is in isolation, what they need to do is to occupy themselves with um, other activities and, and whatnot, but uh, generally speaking, I think the, the the most important thing when it comes to avoiding acts of sin is to seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because when you begin the process of rehabilitation, when you begin the process of uh, clearing the sinful acts from from your life, and you need that extra support, you need the knowledge of knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on your side. And as I might have mentioned before, there's a tradition that states, in the shaytan yuhibbu an yuta'. The shaytan loves to be obeyed. He has this tendency within him that gives them a great deal of pleasure when someone obeys him. And he's dissatisfied when a person refuses to obey the shaytan. So the Imam says, in the shaytan yuhibbu an yuta'. Fa'idha usiya walla. Because he's dissatisfied when someone disobeys him, and he's disobeyed once or twice or three times and, and so on and so forth, he's eventually going to give up. And he'll be upset with the fact that he doesn't really have a very loyal follower in this case. And so he will leave you alone. So the initial stage might be difficult to acknowledge, to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, to, to avoid being in a state of denial, to ask Allah to help and support you, and then to persist for a few times. After that, it becomes a habitual thing, and inshallah, uh, you'll be able to overcome it. So. Uh, is there a question for ladies? Asalaamu As Alaikum. Um, this is another question for Sayyid Mudarasi. Um, what arguments can you use for people who say that um, some are born homosexual? Um, and it's not a choice. 
say it now. No, I much prefer your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Not really an expert on homosexuality. <laughs> so enough with those questions. It was just an example. Okay, first of all, let's assume for argument's sake that gay people have a genetic predisposition towards homosexual acts. In other words, they are naturally inclined for, you know, uh, to opt for a person of the, of the same gender. Let's assume that that's true. There are two main arguments. The first is that pedophiles are also scientifically proven to be genetically predispositioned towards little children. Does that get them off the hook? No. So what's the difference between the two scenarios here? How come pedophilia is a crime of the worst type? It's one of the worst crimes, right? Thankfully, relative morality hasn't really caught up with pedophilia because maybe in 50 years time, God knows, maybe they'll make it legal. I don't know. But so far, alhamdulillah, we're, we're okay. We're all sort of on the safe side here. But pedophiles are proven to be genetically predispositioned. They're proven scientifically to have tendencies towards little children. So why is it that, that the fact that the, their brains are structured in such a way that makes them inclined towards children, that doesn't get them off the hook. And yet suddenly homosexuals want to get off the hook and want to be excused for their immoral acts because they're genetically predispositioned? That's the first argu argument. The second argument is that let's assume that that's true. That merely means that it's more difficult for them to refrain from homosexual tendencies than it is for heterosexuals. It's just like saying, okay, I'm hungry right now and I'm naturally inclined to eating this food which is haram. Therefore, it's okay for me to eat it. Does that argument make sense? Make sense? It doesn't make sense. Yes, you're hungry. Yes, you're naturally inclined. Yes, you have urges and temptations and desires and all those things. But that doesn't mean you should go ahead and eat something that's haram. Unless, of course, you found yourself in, in extreme circumstances where you would die. Right? But, but extreme circumstances, by definition, means that they're, they're, they're rare. They don't happen very often. So just because I'm hungry, and if someone was sitting next to me and he's not that hungry, when he looks at that food, it's haram. But because he's not hungry, he's not inclined towards the food, and he's not tempted to eat it. Does that mean that, for example, God forbid, Allah is being unjust with me because I have those urges and I have that temptation and my friend doesn't? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests each and every one of us in a specific custom-made, tailor-made way. He knows our personalities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaped them so He knows exactly how they are. He knows about our urges, about our temptations, about our desires. Therefore, He tests you in a specific way and He tests me in a different way. And He tests someone else in a, in a, in a completely different way again. So homosexuals are being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's assume they have those temptations and urges, but that doesn't mean that they, they, they cannot help it. Which is why, and so just to back this up, which is why most homosexuals are actually bisexuals. What happened all of a sudden? You're okay with women and men? I thought it was just about men. I thought it was just the, the, the same gender. But suddenly they find themselves having their urge. God forbid, I mean, na'udhu billah, it really is disgusting when you think about it. It's absolutely disgusting. I hope that helps. Is there a question from the gents? Assalamu alaikum. Um, it is said that um, psychologists have said that morality develops like your cognitive thoughts, so it's open to manipulation. So, what can we? Where, where does justice come for those minds that can be manipulated by people? into changing their moral beliefs. Sayyidina, they want to hear you speak. Sayyidina, they're sick and tired of hearing from me. Okay, what was the question again? <laughs> I assumed the Sayyid would take it, so I switched off. What was it? What was uh, some problem? psychologists have said that your morality change, um, can be developed, like your thought patterns. Right. So it's um, open to manipulation. So 
what and what can be said about those people who have, whose minds whose mo whose moral beliefs have been manipulated by those other people? Where does the justice come for them? Like I said, the idea of relative morality is dangerous because they say that it can be developed. That's why today's sinful act is sinful, but then they tell you that in 50 years' time, incest or uh, pedophilia or murder or uh, all these crimes, suddenly the human mind has developed enough to realize that they're no longer sinful. What we're saying is, no, you haven't developed. You've mutated. You haven't progressed. You've regressed. You have subjected morality to external elements. And one of those external elements is the, the democratic process, like we mentioned. Therefore, if, if the majority of people decided that something was right, suddenly it becomes right? I mean, from a logical perspective, this argument is flawed. It doesn't make sense. Just because most people said that it's okay, therefore it's okay. Let's take alcohol, for example. If you see the arguments against alcohol, they're absolutely overwhelming, right? As a matter of fact, if you ask any doctor, which is more harmful, cigarettes or alcohol? They'll tell you it's alcohol. Then how come there is so much negative campaigning taking place against alcohol, and yet nothing taking place with regards to, excuse me, against cigarette smoking, whereas there's nothing when it comes to alcohol consumption? How come? Because the majority wish to continue to drink freely. That's it. People just want to drink, especially the politicians. The politicians are never going to enact a law that bans the consumption of alcoholic beverages because they themselves thrive on alcohol. right? Whereas if you look at it from a logical perspective, if here's something interesting. If people base their morality, even moral relative, uh, uh, proponents of moral relativism, if they based their morality on logical arguments, I think we wouldn't have as many problems as we do today. Even logic is absent from the whole equation. Logic is really not something that, that plays a very big part here. It's, it's, it's the popular taste. It's pop culture. That's what it is. That's what dictates what's right and what's wrong. And that's what makes it so dangerous. If you were to, to use the, the intellect and sit down and draw up two columns, a list of pros and cons for alcohol, what would you find? You would find that sure, alcohol has benefits, it, it thins the blood, it helps the, uh, the, the, uh, the circulatory system, um, you know, sometimes alcohol is prescribed for certain medical conditions, sure. And doctors don't need to tell us that alcohol has benefits because Allah told us that 14 centuries ago. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسَرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا They ask you, O oh Prophet, in the Qur'an, they ask you about alcohol and games of chance, articles of gambling. Tell them they are sinful and there are benefits in them for the people, but their sinful nature outweighs their benefits. Allah says that in the Qur'an, right? So, if you were to draw up a list of pros and cons, alcohol helps the circulatory system, fine, blah, blah, blah. And then, what about the cons? What about the cons? Let me give you just one brief example. I saw a chart that um, it, it clearly illustrates the level of uh, alcohol consumption, specifically vodka, in Russia. And if you see this chart, obviously it has to do with the occasion, it has to do with whether or not it's Christmas time, um, and the weekend and whatnot. So the chart illustrates how much vodka Russians consume on an annual basis, and it goes up and down and up and down, and peaks during Christmas time, right? The time when people are supposed to celebrate the birth of, of one of the greatest moral pioneers humanity has ever seen, Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, right? But let's leave that aside. That chart, I saw another chart that illustrates and draws the number of homicides and violent crimes that take place in Russia. If you were to t put the two charts on top of one another, they would match each other exactly. Now, isn't that 
a, a logical argument to tell you that whenever alcohol consumption goes up, violent crime also goes up. Homicides also go up in Russia. Therefore, alcohol consumption is a contributing, at the very least, if not, if not being the cause of these homicides and violent cr crimes, at the very least, it's a contributing element. But they don't do that. So once again, relative morality makes no sense because it's based on people's tastes, it's based on pop culture, it's based on politicians and, and what they wish to do, it's based on the popular vote. And you can never tell, tell what's, what's right, right and what's, and wrong, what's wrong, wrong based, based on, on what other, other people, people say. say. You, you have, have to be to the be judge, judge of your of own your morality, morality, using, using your, your intellect, intellect and, and using an absolute, absolute moral, moral standard, standard, which we which said, said can be can nothing, nothing but religion, but religion and, and the best, best of all religions, religion, 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 religion. We have time for one, one more quick question for the ladies. Um, Salam alaikum. Quick question for Sayyid Kazwini, please. Can you offer us any advice on how to stop living in the dream you mentioned in face reality? Bismillah. I was really enjoying Sayyid Mudarris' session. Are you, are you sure you don't want him to answer this question? How can How we start living in this dream? Was that the question? question? You see, brothers and sisters, 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 reality is that this, that this dream, dream will end, will end soon. soon. Sooner or Sooner later, the dream, dream will, end. will end. The dream, the dream meaning, meaning this life. life. To realize, to realize that, it's that it's short, short that, it's, that fake, it's fake, that it that will end, end soon, soon. That's the, That's most, the important most important part. part. Some, people, Some people, they live, live life as if they're, as if they're immortal. immortal. As, if as if they're here, they're here to, stay, to stay, and they will, they never, will never be asked, be asked to leave. To That's, leave. The, That's most the most dangerous part to be. That's, That's the, the most dangerous position, position to be in, to, be to in, think to that think you're here, here for, good, for good, and you're never, never going to leave. And, and sort of to tie in with what Samahit Masid was saying regarding sins, the one, the who, one performs who performs so many, so many sins, sins, this is his mentality. His mentality, his mentality is, is he's never leaving. leaving. He's staying, staying here. here. Otherwise, Otherwise, if he knew, knew that, he's that he's leaving, leaving he will, he be, will asked. be asked. There's a, there's judgment, a judgment, there's a there's court, a court there's, there's a judge. A judge. He'll, be, He'll careful. be careful. With every, every step, step, with every word, with every sort of action, action he would be he would careful. The key is, realize that you're only transiting. Sometimes, Sometimes when, we're when we're traveling, traveling when we're going from the U.S. US to the Middle, to the Middle East, East or the opposite, the opposite. we either we transit, transit in London, London or in Frankfurt, Frankfurt or, or any other in European, European country. country. We realize we're only here, here for an hour, hour, two hours, two hours seven, seven hours, hours max. max. What am I going to do, do? Buy a house, house in London? London? Or I buy a house in Frankfurt? I'm only here for seven hours. I would be foolish. I tell some friends that when you go to visit, to visit a place, a place when, you when you stay in a, stay hotel. In a hotel. If you if didn't, you didn't like, like the TV, what are you going to do? Gonna go, do? Buy go buy a 60-inch TV, TV for that hotel, for that hotel room? room? You're not, you're because, not you're because you're only staying, you're only staying there for two days, days three days. days. It would be it would very, very illogical, illogical to, do to do that. It would be stupid to do that. Or a rental car, you go and buy brand new tires for that rental car. Why would you do that? You're giving it back. When you realize that, Everything is going to go back. back. You're, You're going to go, go back. back. You're not You're staying, staying here forever. Here forever. Your, Your actions, actions will change. change. When that when mentality, mentality changes, changes, the action changes, changes as well. Thank you. Thank you. I think I we think have time for one more question for Sayyid Sayyid. Is there a question from the gents? Sayyid Saint as we mentioned uh, the, the traditions, traditions which state, state that, that even one drop, drop um, during the horror um, uh, will give us great rewards, rewards in the hereafter. hereafter. Um, um, when, when, when I try to explain uh, the sheer concepts of, of, of Karbala to my Sunni friends, friends they, they often say, say that, that while, while the Prophet, prophet never mourned, uh, the sheer take, take it too far. far. Can Sayyid uh, uh, give us an argument? About, about why, why Garbala was very specific, specific and why it's actually, actually good to mourn. 
Say it. Say it. Please. Please. To be, to be honest, honest we, are we are not the, not the first, first people that are mourning Imam Hussein. The first, the first person, person who mourned Imam, Imam Hussein was probably Adam. Adam. It, was it was probably, probably Nuh, Nuh Ibrahim. Ibrahim. A hadith, a hadith tells, tells us that, that Allah, Allah made sure, sure that, that out of the 124,000 prophets, prophets, all, all of, them of them come to, come Karbala, to Karbala and shed some tears in Karbala. And they tell and they us that we're the first, first people, people to mourn. mourn. And this, this is a bid'ah, bid it's an innovation. Rasulullah warned Imam Hussein. The minute, the minute that he was born, born the day he was born, he goes and visits Fatima al Zahra. He holds the one, one, one day old child. child. He says the adhan in his right ear. He says the adhan in his left ear. And then he begins to weep. He begins to weep. And he, and he tells his daughter, daughter that Jibra'il has informed him, him that this, this child, child will grow up, grow up and will and die, die, eventually will die. die. And he tells and he her tells the story. story. What's, What's interesting, interesting is that, that Fatima Tazahra tells him, him when, will when will this happen? happen? He says this, this is, is at a time when I will, I will no longer be existent, existent. nor will no his father, nor will his mother, nor will his brother. His mother says, then who will be crying for him? If we're not if we're there not to cry for him, who will be crying for him? Rasulullah says, says Allah will create a group, a group of people, people that will come and mourn for him and cry for him. For him. All the All imams mourned for him. For him. Fatima Dizar herself weeped we and, and cried for him. For him. This, this is a tradition of the Ahlul Bayt. This is the tradition of the imams, whether they like it or not. Enough is enough to be always on the defense. We should we tell them, why don't you cry for him? Not why, why we cry, cry Why, why are, are your hearts, hearts so, so... Why are why your hearts, hearts as, as hard as stone? stone? You, hear you hear the story, the story of, of the tragedy of Karbala. You, you hear that the, that the, that the horses, horses trampled on the chest of Imam Hussein, yet not a tear comes down here. We need to ask them why. Why are your hearts as cold as stone? Salawat. I'd like, I'd like to once, once again, again thank both of our speakers, say Muhammad Mehdi and Madarasi and Sayyid Hussain as we need for their efforts tonight. Inshallah, I'll reward them plentifully. I'd like to hand back to our MC, Sadiq, with Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.